Some of you might know why I'm making this video now. If you don't know, just think of it as if I'm on my alt account and I'm trying to choose who I want to pick for my free 5 star selector. Now that we're deeper into the game, and now that we have an idea of what the endgame rotation looks like, we have three different rotating endgame game modes. We have MOC, which is like your typical endgame mode. Then we have Pure Fiction, which is an AoE-centered endgame mode. And then we have Apocalyptic Shadow, which is a break-focused endgame mode. With these three endgame modes in mind, I'm going to walk you through what I think of each character in terms of priority of picking them up. If you don't have a copy of Himiko, I would say Himiko right now is the most value, just because she is the most versatile unit of all the standard banner characters. She works really well in Pure Fiction because she's her kit is AoE centered and Pure Fiction is in the AoE game mode. She's also really good in Apocalyptic Shadow because she also focuses around breaking enemies and Apocalyptic Shadow is also a game mode focused around breaking enemies. So Himiko, very versatile. And then in the right MOC floors where there's a lot of fire weakness, Himiko is also a pretty decent unit to use. Now, if you already have a copy of Himiko, then I would probably consider someone else just because her Eidolons are not that useful or they're decent, but they're not anything that I think you should chase after. I think an E0 Himiko is definitely good enough and then her Eidolons aren't, they aren't amazing. So if you don't have a copy of Himiko, I would prioritize Himiko. If you already have a Himiko, then I would consider one of the other characters. So let's say you already have a Himiko because on my account, I do have a Himiko, which means I'll probably be considering one of the other characters. I would say Branya is a very good consideration, especially if you use units like Blade, Jingliu, or Boot Hill. That's because she is one of their better teammates. And also Branya has really good Eidolons. So at E0, she's kind of underwhelming, but her E1 is very good because it makes her more skill point efficient. Her E2 is also really good because it allows you to drop your speed boot for an HP or an attack boot and still get your carry, brawn your carry playstyle. Her E4 is situationally good. In certain teams, it's actually pretty strong. In other teams, it's kind of useless. And then her E6 is really good as well because it extends her skill duration, which is one of her kit's biggest weakness. So one of the things that makes Sparkle better than Branya is that Sparkle's skill kind of extends past your turn. But with Branya E6, this kind of solves her issue of her skill duration. So Branya is a very strong harmony character. At E0, she's kind of underwhelming, but her Eidolons are pretty good. They're probably the best standard banner Eidolons of all the characters. But again, if you're not someone who uses Jingliu, Boot Hill, or Blade, or maybe some other characters I'm not thinking of, then maybe Branya isn't a priority for you. So I would say the next group of characters would be the sustains. If you're someone who's newer to the game and you only have a Natasha or a Lynx, then you could consider Jepard or Bailu. But to be honest, both of these characters are now outclassed immensely by other characters just because Jepard is just a shielder. He's a pure and pure shielder who does nothing else. And then Bailu is a pure and pure healer. All she does is heal and she doesn't really do anything else. So you can choose which one you prefer if you need someone to sustain you. But I would say both of them are kind of irrelevant nowadays. And also they don't have the best Eidolons. Jepard E1 is useless, E2 is useless, E4 is situationally useful, but this isn't actually a lot of effect res. And then E6 only, ha like this talent only triggers when Jepard dies. If Jepard is dying on your team and an E6 Jepard at that, you have bigger issues with your team. So I would say probably hold off on Jepard. Aventurine, which is on the current banner, is just miles better than Jepard. And then for someone like Bailu, E1 gives her a bit more energy. E2 makes her healing better, which is not that useful because her healing is already really good. E4 slightly increases your damage, but requires a skill point. So you could consider this a tiny team buff, but honestly, this isn't actually that good. And then E6 is another thing that only triggers when your allies die. And if they're dying with the Bailu on your team, you have bigger things to worry about. So again, Bailu, not that good. Definitely outclassed by characters like Gallagher, Lingsha, and, and the rest. 
However, these characters are still useful, and if you need a sustain, they definitely do their job. It's just all they do is sustain. For your current endgame, it's actually gotten quite hard where you definitely want your sustains to provide more than just healing and shielding. You want them to provide some sort of offensive utility, and Bailu and Japar just don't have that in their kit, so I wouldn't really recommend them. Okay, and then now we're left with three sort of damage dealing characters. We have Welt, we have Clara, and we have Yanqing. I'm going to start with Welt. Welt is situationally decent, but he's quite niche nowadays. I would say Welt's main role is as a pseudo sustain because he can slow enemies, he can imprison enemies, and just delay them. So if your team's strong enough, he can replace the sustain on your team and just delay enemies so that your team can just nuke them down before they can even act. So a lot of your no-hit runs, some they sometimes use Welt to just delay the enemies so that they can never actually have a turn. For me personally, I use him sometimes in an Acheron team as a pseudo-sustain because he's a Nihility character and Acheron wants Nihility teammates. But ever since Zhao Cho came out, I haven't actually seen a reason to use him because he doesn't really amplify your damage that much. He does have a vulnerability on his ultimate, which is kind of useful, but Zhao Cho provides much more of this. So honestly, I wouldn't really recommend Welt. His Eidolons are also not too great. It's just weird because I don't see him being a prime pick for any of your teams. Like, Branya in certain teams is actually one of the better units. There is usually easily a better option to pick over Welt. And then with Clara, she's definitely usable in the MOC. And in certain pure fictions, she does do okay. But I think she struggles really, really hard in Apocalyptic Shadow. And also, her Eidolons are not super amazing they're not horrible they're actually decent and then her e6 is really strong because it increases her counters by one or like the enhanced ones that do blast damage but i think what would have made her a bit better is if instead of increasing her enhanced counters if it made it the enhanced counter like an aoe attack so that it could hit all enemies instead of just three that would make her more usable in pure fiction and then maybe would also make her more usable in apocalyptic shadow Anyways, Clara, definitely okay. Like, she she is usable in certain game modes, right? I have 36 third MOC 12 with Clara, and certain pure fictions, she's also done really well for me. It's just Apocalyptic Shadow is a huge, huge struggle that I don't really recommend her. If you don't have a Himiko, definitely pick Himiko up over Clara. Otherwise, I would only pick Clara up if you like her and you like the counterplay style. And then the other thing I haven't mentioned is She's already been power crept by Yun Li, so <laughs> she's basically a worse version of Yun Li. And then finally we have Yan King. Um, what do I say about him? I think he's definitely a unit. He does damage, and his E4 is not bad. Res Pen is something that's pretty rare, so it's definitely a very valuable multiplier to have. If the enemies are weak to ice, he's honestly not that bad. I would still say, though, there's better characters to use over him. Okay, let's phrase it this way. Yan Ching is a 5-star standard ice character. There's another Hoyo game called Genshin Impact that also has a 5-star standard ice character called Chi Chi. <laughs> when you see Yan Ching pop up in your 50-50 loss, it's kind of considered the same as getting a Chi Chi. Not that he's not usable whatsoever, just like how Chi Chi can be used in Genshin if you know what you're doing. For the majority of players, it's not worth the effort of trying to make him work. There's a lot I don't like about his kit. His talent is a big chunk of his damage and it's RNG. There's a 50% chance to launch it. And also, if he gets hit, he loses this. So you can't get hit either. So you have to rely on enemy RNG attacks and then you have to hope there are no AoE enemy attacks. And then also, he's basically only made to be good against ice weakness enemies. So unless you have a Silver Wolf on your team, it's a really situational one you can even use Yanqing. 
This is a useless trace. Honestly, there's too much that I don't like about him. Personally, I think Yanqing has the lowest value of all the characters here. I would say Himeko E0 is the highest priority. Then once you got yourself a copy of Himeko, if you have no other sustains on your account besides someone like Natasha, then Japard or Bailu can carry you through their early game. But late game, they're going to fall off. So keep that in mind. If you don't need any more sustains, then I would just go Branya, Branya E1, Branya E2, Branya E3, Branya E4, Branya E5, Branya E6. And then if you're considering more than that, then you probably don't need to watch this video because you already know what you're doing, right? If you already have Branya E6, what are you watching this video for? 